<coughs> Listen close today to, not to me, but to the Holy Spirit. I've asked God to speak to me as well. He's been speaking to me all week, as usual. Most of it good. <laughs> this is life changing. But it's a simple thing, but it actually is life changing if you grasp it today. Change your life. This is one of those things that is simple in the Bible, but if you don't do it, you're just on the wrong track. And you're going to cause yourself a whole bunch of anxiety, fear, unrest. But if you grasp what the Holy Spirit is saying in this simple scripture and you apply it to your life, it changes everything. It changes how you face death. It changes how you face disease. It changes how you face a car accident. It changes how you face an economy or a out of control government or a lost spouse changes everything. Lord, speak to us. Please don't let me get in the way. And let me be short, Lord, please. Amen. We've got potluck today. Let me be short. <laughs> I'm even praying for that now, so that's how desperate we are. <laughs> the average person spends 26 years sleeping in a lifetime. I want you to think about how insignificant our lives are. Psalm says that we're like grass, we're like a blade of grass. We, we sprout, we grow, and then we wither and die. You know, I've got some friends here. John, you're 90 years old. How fast does that go? It's fast, right? You were playing hockey just a few years ago, right? It goes fast. I'm 57, soon to be 58. I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, you know, I think everyone here can agree. It seems to me like grade one to grade 12 took forever. Is that the way it was with you guys? I, I don't know, that took forever. Every tick on the clock was in math class was like tick, grade, tick. But as soon as I got out of grade 12, wow, 30, 40, 50, just like that. The average person is 89 years old. Now, that's amazing because in, in the uh, early 1800s, the average lifespan was early 30s. Early 30s. Except for Jewish people. You know why? Because God gave them law. Wash your hands before you eat. We talked about that last week. It was brilliant what God did. But early 30s. Now, our average lifespan today is 89 years. 26 years you spend sleeping. Not enough. Oh, I, I, I was going to say less. There's a few people here that I won't name that, that spend 36 years sleeping, right? 26 years of your 89 years is spent sleeping, right? Seven years trying to get to sleep. Some of those, some of us is more like 10 years. That's when you're reading books, you're watching TV, you're trying to get to sleep. Some of us are reading our Bible, right? Some of us are listening to our scripture, trying to get to sleep. 33 years in total, gone. An 89 year life. 50 years of employment adds up to about 14 years of actually working. If you're below the age of 40, it's more like five years of actually working. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, I won't mention that, but 50 years now, now that's still life. Now, I, I believe that's why it's so important to have a job that you love. And if you're doing something in the will of God, you will love it. And that could be flipping hamburgers. <coughs> it doesn't have to be great. We're always, we always think about money. Money doesn't mean anything. Vic says, if you find a job you love, then you're actually not working. Right? And I recommend preaching because it's amazing. Well, I recommend, we actually need more preachers. We do. And there's a list of 200 churches. I get, I get offers. I got an offer from Texas. You know, there's churches looking for pastors all over the place. You know, and you, you think, well, no, no, actually, but, but, you know, that's me. Okay, I, that's where God has me. God has something for you. And if you love it, then it's not actually working. Remember, we're spending our whole life with God. But I'm just, look at how short life is. Eh? 
4.6 years of your 89 years is spent eating on average. Three years is on holidays. Just three years on holidays. That's it. In 89 years. 12 years of screen time and that's, grow that's gotten bigger now. Screen time is social media, computer, TV. But I did a study on that. There's the, the, the younger generation is spending up to 8 to 12 hours a day on the phone. 8 to 12 hours a day on the phone. And anybody that's been around me, I spend a lot of time on the phone. I'm texting, I'm praying for people, I'm, I'm, I'm posting things. I am. I'm spending a lot of time on the phone. It connects us. It, it can be... It can be time consuming, right? And, and what really matters there is what are you watching on that phone? What are you watching on that TV screen? What are you, what are you filling your mind with? 12 years, 1.3 years is spent exercising. I would think that would be 0.3 years for me, right? One year is for romance, just one year. Women take about 136 days of their 89 years is spent getting ready. <laughs> Sarah only spent six days over 89 years getting ready, right? I know, I know some people. Morgan is amazing. She gets up in like, like three minutes. She's not gone. Now, now, she should take a shower probably more than once a month, right? But, but she, she doesn't spend much time. But a lot of women spend a lot of time. Most men, on average, this is on average, spend 46 days of their 89 years getting ready. 115 days laughing. I, I'd like to increase that in our lives, right? 235 days waiting, waiting in line on the phone, phoning tell us to change your plan, right? Red lights. Yeah, red lights, waiting. That leaves us with about 3,000 days to live as we choose. In 89 years, you have about three. What, what my point is, is this is temporary, folks. It's quick, it's temporary. Earth is temporary. And we spend all, well, if you're anything like me, 90% of my focus is on earth. My retirement fund, my, my getting higher up in my job, buying my toys, trying to get, you know, my spouse and working for my house and my hot tub and, you know, and I'm, and it, I'm just, I'm consumed. Politics, our government, our, our you know, COVID, uh, Vaccines, you know, just always on my mind. This earth, this earth, and this earth is 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 eight hours lost in a river. But that was worth. But actually, that's an eternal moment. We were lost on the river. We will never forget that. I will never forget that because I will never go with Brian again at eight o'clock at night <laughs> down the Pemina River with three tubes and then some kids, right? And <laughs> it was so funny because. Because Leanne started by singing B-I-N-G-O, and at the end she's like, where are we? <laughs> it, it, it brings to, to, to account, and I, we, you know, we did a funeral yesterday, right? I did a funeral yesterday. And every time you do a funeral, you know, you start, you start realizing we're going to die. We all die. And what matters? What matters? What, what matters? What, tubing down the river matters. Camping matters. You know, serving others matters. And I'm telling you what the Bible says. Being in the will of God, loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and mind, loving others more than yourself. These are the things you take to heaven. These are treasures in heaven. These are things that never go away. The moment you gave somebody water, and when God, when Jesus said, you gotta give me water, you gotta give me food, you gotta visit me in jail, it's more than just going to jail. It's actually caring for others. It might be visiting somebody in Westlock that's down and out or somebody that just needs encouragement or somebody that you just like hanging around. It might be me phone. I didn't see you in church. So you're phoning. I know there's a few people in church that do have a ministry that way. I didn't see you in church. Are you okay? Are you okay? Giving somebody water, you know, somebody that might not even deserve it. We're finding a couch for them. We're finding, we're finding things for them. Boy, it's been a pleasure giving out some of our hamburger to people. Just that little bit of hamburger brightens their day. These things are eternal. Most people focus on the 3,000 days instead of eternity. 
Eternity, folks, is forever. Heaven is forever. What, what we are on this planet for is, is, is growing towards Jesus, growing as one, John 17, tells God's business plan. He wants, may we become one together, one with Jesus, one with the Father through Jesus. We all become one. You know, spreading the kingdom in, 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 in Christianity is not, not like the Jehovah Witnesses who are trying to, you know, get more members into their church. We don't need more members in our church. The kingdom is about spreading Jesus to people so that they actually do care about others more than themselves. Can you imagine Canada if everyone actually cared about others more than themselves? Wouldn't that be heaven? If we actually cared about others more than we're driving down the road and that guy actually cares about you getting in? You know what it's like when somebody lets you in? You feel like you feel like giving the guy a hug, right? You feel like stopping the car and giving the guy a hug because you know that you're all in there and he goes, oh, go ahead. He stops for you. Wouldn't it be something if we we're all like that? Wouldn't the traffic be better? Wouldn't, wouldn't the distribution of food be better? Wouldn't the distribution of wealth be better? Wouldn't the distribution of, of love and joy be better? That is God's plan. That's what he wants. It's, 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 it's glorifying him. It's, it's, it's showing who Jesus is by the way we live. We have a whole different set of values. If we set our eyes on the realities of heaven instead of the fakeness, the fantasy of earth, this isn't real. This will all pass away. Every bit of it will pass away. You know, that earthquake in Syria, there was ancient buildings, ancient temples, gone. It doesn't matter if they're ancient. It doesn't matter how old they are. Everything will pass. The Rocky Mountains will pass away. Everything is going to be gone. And the only thing that's going to remain is heaven and hell. Heaven and hell. That's all that's going to remain. And there's one thing and one thing only that's going to get you to heaven. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's not what you did. It's who you know. It's not whether you were good or bad. No, it's who you know. It's who you know. If you know Jesus Christ and you have accepted him, and you've said, I am a sinner. I admit I'm a sinner. And oh God, forgive me. I need you to forgive me. That's being poor in spirit. I have nothing to give you. My little gifts that I, that I have are from you. Even my faith is from you. Everything I have is from you. I have nothing to give you. I am poor in spirit. And I'm mourning for my sins. Please forgive me. Oh God, forgive me. You will be saved. And you will go to heaven. But even more importantly than that, you will be a child of God. So many depressed people. I was one of them. I was depressed. And you know, I often say this to depressed people. It's more than just one prayer. It's, it's a step towards Christ every day. And you're seeking him with all your face. And you're, you're putting all your effort into him, 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 him. And that depression will be released. And he'll replace it, your ashes with beauty. And he'll replace your, your despair with festive praise. He'll, 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 he'll take your miserable life and just fill you with joy. And then he'll split your head in half with blessings. And I know this. But it's, it's not just one prayer. It's a lifetime of surrendering, committing. It's not like booze is easier, right? Because you just drink some booze and at least it numbs you. For a couple hours, you're numb. And then you wake up and it's worse. Because booze is a lie. Jesus is the real deal. The real deal. But you got to be all in. One second after you die. One second after you die. One second after you die, you're going to go, why didn't I think about heaven more than earth? Why didn't I think about Jesus more than all this nonsense? 
Why did I put so much effort into the right car, the right clothes, the right hair? How much time, you know, do I spend on this? You know, and what for? It just ends up on my couch anyway. <laughs> it ends up on the, in the shower drain, you know, and I'm buying like, you know, shampoo and cream rinse and, you know, I'm, I'm putting all my money into this. You know, I, I, there's somebody here that I won't, I'm not gonna say their name, that but, you know, a little thing of, of armpit stuff for $22. $22 for under your armpit. You know, hey, you know, that's up to you, but I, I just think we spend too much time on nothing. And I told you guys, I worked at, I worked at a funeral home. I, I ran the crematorium, right? I was not in sales, I did the work. Your body is just an empty shell. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. Your beauty has nothing to do with your hair. Your beauty has nothing to do with your body. Nothing. Some of the most beautiful people I've ever met are, were, are heavily overweight. Some of the most beautiful people I've ever met are, are, have no hair. They're, they're bald. Some of the most beautiful people I know have an acne problem. It's just nothing to do with your body. That's the world lying to us. It's all lies. The beauty comes from within. That's why Winnie is one of the most beautiful people I know in the world. When I grow up, I want to be Winnie and John because they care about others. You know, sorry, Winnie, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but you are a very beautiful woman. Hey, isn't that right? She's a very beautiful woman. John, you're a very lucky man. Very lucky man. Heaven is real. Heaven is forever. Earth adds up to about 3,000 days if you live to be 89. If you live to be 89. My sister died at 58. She probably had about, you know, 1,500 days. That's it. That's life. Most people focus on 3,000 days instead of forever. Do you see how stupid that is? We, we focus on 3,000 days instead of forever. This will change your life if you start focusing on forever. If you start focusing on forever, little things count. Little things count. You know, you find $20 on the ground and you know it's not yours and there's some people over there that it's probably theirs and you go tap them on the shoulder and you say, hey, is this yours? Rather than, hey, that's a pack of smokes, or that could buy me a, you know, a, you know, a Big Mac and some fries. It, it changes everything. Because heaven is telling, saying, is more interested in your integrity, more in, interested in your honesty, more interested in your love for others than the Big Mac. The Big Mac is, is the short term, 3,000 day focus. And, and heaven, you're thinking, you're, I'm storing treasures in heaven. I'm gonna give that $20 back. I, I think I told this story, and forgive me, because I've been here seven years, so I repeat some, but some of you haven't heard, I'm sure. I was, I'm, I'm still mystified, because I spent years, you know, high and drunk, which was absolute waste of time, because I couldn't forgive, I couldn't forgive. So I just made, made myself an excuse. And I was in Guelph, Ontario, and they used to pay me in cash. So I did a, I did a one nighter. I used to get paid, you know, five thousand to seven thousand dollars a night. I used to, I don't, I wasn't overly successful, but I used to get paid. And they would give me cash, so I had five thousand dollars in my pockets, and I'm high. And it's five in the morning. To, you know, I hadn't gone to bed yet. And me and the band guys are walking down Guelph. And I reached into my pocket, I don't even know how it happened, and I pulled out $5,000 cash somehow. I might, must have been reaching for my keys, and that big wad of, of mostly $20 bills went on the ground, downtown Guelph. And we just kept walking, because that's what happens when you, when you rely on drugs. You're not in your right mind, and you make mistakes, and you, you do stupid things. And all of a sudden, a guy in a suit, I'll never forget, he was in a suit because people that normally help me are in leather jackets and long hair and beards. And they look like Big Red, right? People that normally help me, they're, they don't wear suits. But this guy had a suit. 
And he runs up to me and he, he's got a wad of $20 bills and he's like, I think you dropped this. That still mystifies me. Cash from some scum. I was scum. He had no reason to be kind to me. And he had a suit. That hit me. And I needed that money too. See, he's storing treasures in heaven instead of pocketing that. It's storing treasures in heaven. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Here's the reality of heaven. Jesus Christ with the nail scars in his hands, the same body that rose from the dead, the same body that walked out of the tomb, the same body that's got that a scar in his side, scars in his feet, and he ate, remember, he, he, he cooked on the beach for the, for the disciples. He ate after he rose again from the grave. That same body is at the right hand side of God, interceding for us. Hey, I know Sue messed up again. That's okay, I have it. I love her. She's got my righteousness. I've got her. He's our advocate. He is there right now. That's reality. The reality of, oh, I messed up again. Oh, I'm so miserable. That's not reality. That is fantasy. That is Satan keeping you in the pit so you're good for nothing. Freedom in Christ says, I am living in the light. What is living in the light? That doesn't mean that you don't sin. It means you don't hide. Living in the light means you don't hide. It means I admit this is who I am. And it is not perfect. Thank you, Jesus, for your perfect righteousness. That's freedom in Christ. Living in faith. Thank you, Jesus, that you are perfect. I will never be perfect. And I have this problem. God, I repent for that. Please, I need your help. I want to get rid of that. I don't want to be that man anymore. You pray for that. I don't want to have a temper problem anymore. I don't want to have a lust problem anymore. I don't want to have a, an addiction problem anymore. And you pray and you trust him, but you don't live by your performance. Your performance, trust me, it's horrible. And it will be horrible till the day you die. But I have Christ's performance covering me. Freedom in Christ. That's the realities of heaven. That is what we're setting our minds on. It changes everything when you see heaven and you don't see earth. Life without God is dead. Life without God is dead. The wages of sin is death. Guilt, fear, shame, selfishness, self-hatred, separation from God, blind purpose, no future, no hope, no real love, no real power, dead. Life without God is dead. Jesus made you alive. Washed you whiter than snow. Boy, I love hearing babies. We need about 50 more of those things in here. <laughs> it's great, great to hear babies. I hope, we, I hope we see some more. Jesus washed you whiter than snow. He made you alive. What does it mean to be alive? Being alive means... You get up in the morning and you can't wait to face the day. And what are you going to do today, Jesus? What are you going to do today? I know I have a meeting at 2 o'clock and I'm going to meet less. What is that going to amount to? See, my mind is on heaven. There's somebody that came to church last night who's never been here before. What are you up to now, Lord? What's going on now? You're always thinking about what he's doing, tuning into what he's up to. Oh, I lost my keys. Why did I lose my keys? <coughs> I got a cold. Why have I got a cold, Lord? He might not give you the answer, but everything, everything has to do with our sovereign God who's in charge of everything. And he promised everything is for your greater good. To those that believe in him, to those that have received him, to he, those that have become his children, everything that happens to you is for your greater good. So we're in continuing care. They're all in wheelchairs. 
There's a lady there, you know, a couple of ladies there that are blind, can't see nothing. How can that be for their greater good? What about dementia? How can that be for your greater good? I see it. Because through suffering, I'll tell you, if you're a 10 millionaire farmer, you got 10 million bucks, and you get old enough that you're in continuing care and you have to have a nurse take you to the bathroom and wipe you. Exactly, Maxine. That's priceless. Because it's preparing you with humility. It's giving you humility. How much is humility worth in the kingdom of God? It's priceless. It's worth more than your 10 million bucks. Everything is for your greater good, for eternity. It's causing you to, to be humble, causing you to suffer the way Jesus suffered. There's reward in suffering. Everything is for our greater good. Suddenly, everything here on earth is not real, it's temporary, it's fantasy, and heaven is a reality. We are dead without God, and Jesus makes us alive. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved, not by works, lest anyone should boast. With the exception of anything the, the Holy Spirit is doing, this world is dead. With the exception of anything the Holy Spirit is doing, this world is dead. It's cursed, it's dead, and it's not going to be here forever. When you're blind, heaven is a fantasy. When you're blind, heaven is a fantasy. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. What does that mean? That's fantasy. That's a ghost story. That's what it sounds like when you're blind. And we all float around heaven playing harps. That's, 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 that's a ghost story when you're blind. But when, you're, when, you, when your eyes are open, that's the reality. That's the reality. And the rest of this is a ghost story. Everything on here in, in earth will pass away. So 2 Peter 3.10 says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements. When it says the heavens, we're talking about the galaxies. Okay? It's not talking about heaven. It's talking about the galaxies. The heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed. All the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. That will happen, folks. Everything that we're fighting for, everything that we're putting all our energy in, everything that we're worried about, well, it's just nothing. It's going to be gone. The only thing that matters is who you are in this cursed world. The decisions that you make in this cursed world. Loving others more than yourself. Loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. That's all that will matter. Point two. One second after you die, you will understand perfectly heaven is reality. Everything we see and feel is now fantasy. The things of heaven versus the things of earth. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. This is life changing. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. So what are, what are some examples of that? Earth tells us fame, power, and money bring satisfaction. Heaven tells us eternal life with Jesus is all that counts. Mark 8, 36 says, And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? What do you benefit if you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul? And then we have, we even have secular guys that are telling us, that, you know, I don't think Jim Carrey's saved yet, but I don't know, he's awfully close. What does Jim Carrey say? I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so that they can see that it's not the answer. There's a guy that doesn't even, I don't even, I don't, he doesn't profess to even know Jesus. But he's had all the fame, all the money, and he's sitting there going, wow, this is emptiness. So there's guys that have already achieved everything that maybe you're dreaming of that are saying, don't do it, it's a waste of time. Don't do it, it's a waste of time. One thing I know about money, owning things, it just, every time you buy something, it's another thing in your head. It's another roof you have to shingle. It's another door you have to fix. It's another room you have to paint. It's another, it's another uh, motor you gotta change the oil. It's another motor you gotta put uh, insurance on. 
Every time you buy something, it just adds another thing to your head. And, and if God doesn't want you to own that, it's just distracting you for nothing. If God wants you to own that for his glory, then you need to own that. And you need to put it in your head because that's thinking about things of heaven. But if God doesn't want you to own that and you're just getting that because you think it's, you know, you want to measure up to the Joneses, you're coveting, you're coveting what everyone else has, or you just think it'd be fun to own your own jet ski. Well, and that's another thing. You got to store it. You got to worry about people stealing it. You got to put insurance on it. You got to fix it. It's just going to distract you and take you away from life, from real life. So your possessions can really hurt you. Now we're going to have a garage sale like crazy over the next week. Hey, everybody's just going to be selling everything. Those are things you got to work out between you and God. This is between you and God. You know, I have a motorbike. I am sure that God wants me to have a motorbike. You know, I've seen fruit from it. So I have a motorbike. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. It's just one big headache. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves will not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, the desires of your heart will be also. Earth tells us to fear. Heaven tells us to trust. Earth tells you to be scared. Jesus says, don't be scared. Trust me. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Psalms 56, 3 and 4. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mortal, mortals do to me? Don't worry about this world. Don't worry about your enemies. I, I always picture Paul, you know, in jail, not knowing that he's writing letters for, for the Bible, right? He, he, does, he didn't know he's writing the Bible. And, he, and he's not questioning any of the letters. Like, Why did God put me in jail? How, please pray that God gets me out of jail. They're going to kill me soon. Please pray that he, they change their minds and I live. He doesn't, he doesn't, I don't see any requests whatsoever. His requests are all, hey, I pray that you will have the knowledge of his will. I pray that you will get to know Jesus more and that, you, that other people will get to know Jesus. And, and then I can see him loving his Roman guards, loving the guy that's chopping his head off. Loving Nero, he even said, Romans 13, honor your government, pray for them, pay your taxes. Titus, he says it again. It's, it's, his mind is on heaven. His mind is on eternity. His mind is on, and on God's in control. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And if I'm not, I'm not. And in the meantime, I'm going to write these letters because I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling me to write these letters. Not realizing that in 2023 in a little town called Westlock, we're going to be reading his letters. Isn't it amazing? What is God doing for you that you don't understand? What little thing are you doing that is going to last way longer than your life? When, what are you doing when you rest in him and you're not trying to, you know, show him how good you are? You're not good. You're not trying to, oh, look at how well I performed. Look at my faith. I raised five people from the dead last week. He's not interested in that. He's interested in you resting in him, trusting him. And then he's doing something that you might not even know. You might not have a clue what he's doing. But he's doing it beyond you because it's all about him. And he loves to use you because you're his children. And he gets a kick out of it when you glorify him by acting like him. By behaving like him. By becoming like him. We're glorifying him. And do not fear, Matthew 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body and but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. When you're thinking about heaven instead of earth, your fear is in one thing and one thing only. God. You fear God. We don't, we don't want to ditch God. We want to honor God. We fear God. We reverence Him. We respect Him. We love Him. He's our Father. He's the only thing we fear. There is nothing else to fear. Jesus said these words. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear Him who cannot, not destroy, can destroy both soul and body in hell. Boy, pretty fierce words. 
Lamentations, who's in control? God is in control. God is in control of everything. I hear this argument all the time. I want to be very clear as what the Bible says to me. You can read your Bible. You can say what you think. Satan is the prince of this world. When you become a child of God, God is your king. God is in charge of Satan. God created Satan. There is nothing that will ever happen to you that God has not dictated, allowed, and wants for his glory and for your greater good. He's sovereign. Amen. Charge of every dust particle, every, every bacteria, every disease, every car accident, every piece of vehicle you're driving, he's in charge. Amen. Who can command things to happen? Lamentations 3, 37 to 40. Who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission? Does not the Most High send both calamity and good? then why should we mere humans complain when we are punished for our sins? Instead, let us test and examine our ways. Let us turn back to the Lord. I think that this scripture is very potent for right now today. Amen. Because God is going, I've had enough. Yes. Your laws are betraying me. You're mocking me. Your, your whole society is throwing me into the dumpster and I've had enough. And it starts with his church, with his children. I've had enough. And we need to go, oh, we're so worried that he is uh, punishing us. The cost of living is going up. We got COVID, there's earthquakes, there's war, there's this, there's that. And I, I, we're seeing revival, aren't we? Because it's time, it's time we turn back to God. It's time we turn back to God. Let us turn back to the Lord. Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. For the good of those who love God. There's an if there, right? If you don't love God, everything doesn't work together for your good. But if you do love God, everything, everything works together for your good. Your best for eternity and are called according to his purpose for them earth tells us death is the end heaven tells us death is the beginning when you concentrate on have the things of heaven instead of the things of earth death becomes the most exciting day of your life your last breath is the most exciting breath that you took your whole entire life it's graduation day Amen. you're going to see Jesus you're going to hang out with Paul and Moses and your mom. It is the most exciting time that you could possibly have. And how do you know? Well, he who knows the Son has life. He who does not know the Son of God has death. These things were written to those of you that believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so that you may know that you have eternal life. If you know Jesus, you're in. So you can die excited. When you concentrate, Revelation 21, 4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall be, there shall be no mourning, no crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. It'll change your life if you start concentrating on the things of heaven instead of the things of earth. Lately, people have feared COVID, vaccines. People fear plastic, plastic bags. We fear plastic. A few years ago, we, we feared paper bags. You remember? Because we're killing all the trees. Somebody's playing with us, don't you think? Like, we, we feared a hole in the ozone. You remember that? We, we feared in the late 70s that the, a new ice age is coming. Everything's going to turn to ice. And then it all changed. No, everything's going to be desert. Do you think that God would care whether an ice age comes? Is he going to, or a desert? Do you think he's in charge of that? Oh, yeah. Do you think he controls the ozone? Yeah. Do you think that we could trust God? That if he wants to destroy the earth, he will. And if he doesn't, he won't. I don't think we need to believe any malarkey from anybody about the end of the earth this and the end of the earth that and this that and that and the other thing we need to be think about others first don't throw your plastic bag out the window because you're making it messy for other people because we love other people 
Does that make sense? You know, it's not a religion to recycle. That's not a religion. People make that a religion. I think it's all about love. If we love each other, we wanna, we wanna make sure that we do our best to, to help other people. It's about love. It's not about a religion. You know, I had somebody when I first came to this church, I was lighting, lighting a fire out there in the fire pit and I used some cardboard and they were like, what are you doing? You can't burn cardboard. I was like, well, I'm lighting a fire. <laughs> you know, that's, I don't know, I grew up on a farm, we use cardboard. You know, it's okay to be responsible, but it's not a religion. It's about love. It's about caring for others. We fear Russia, we fear China, we fear tap water. If I die from drinking tap water, I want to die. We fear the government. Fear, 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 fear. The Bible tells us to fear one thing and one thing only. God. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and also trust in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I am going. Where's, where's the way to where he's going? Jesus says, I am the way. The way is Christ. Yeah, one way. The way is Him. And why is it Him? He's the only one that can forgive your sins. He's the only one that can make you fit to go to heaven. There's, there is no other way. There's no other way. He's not lying. He's preparing a place for you. He's going to come and get you. He's not lying. So, Christ is your life. Colossians 3, 3 and 4. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is your life is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Soon we will see, and I think we're even starting to see right now, people are going dancing around with Satan horns, you know, and, and mocking out God and having sex with whatever says yes is not working. It's not working for you. It's not working for society. It's not working for your kids. And God's way is the only way that works. And it's time to turn back. And I think the whole world is starting to see this. The whole world is starting to see this. So Christ is our life. Your old self will say, go ahead. If it feels good, do it. Christ says that habit or that thing that makes you feel good is going to hurt you and it's poison and you need to say no to it. You need to deny it. Your old self will say, get even with that person. Somebody made you mad. Somebody hurt you. Somebody did something wrong to you. Take, take a, half of your brain, attention, all your focus on getting back at that person. Stop thinking about things that matter. Start just thinking about getting back at that person. Jesus says, forget it. Don't repay evil for evil. Love your enemies. Let it go. That's going to make you free. That's going to bring you joy. That's going to get you away from depression. It is the right thing to do. His way is the right way to go. The world will say pleasure is the answer. The reality of heaven is that love is the answer. Agape love, real love. Real love doesn't take. Real love gives, not expecting anything in return. That's real love. It's giving, not expecting anything in return. There's no strings attached. That's real love. Serving others, self-control, obedience. The world will say lying, cheating, stealing to get what you want is the answer. The reality of heaven says, even if you don't have a bunch of possessions and you have integrity, that's the answer. Honesty, integrity. That's the answer. The world will say power, control, manipulation is the answer. The realities of heaven say servanthood, sacrifice, faithfulness, and humility is the answer. When you, when you think about the things of heaven, your priorities change. Your goals will change. Your values will change. It changes the way you spend money. It changes the way you think about money. When you're focused on earth, money is a goal. When you're focused on heaven, money is a tool whole different thing 
When you're focused on earth, pleasure, popularity, material things are the reason for living. When you're focused on heaven, your relationship with Jesus and your relationship with others is all that counts. I'm going to end this off with a page from John Wesley's diary. Who knows who John Wesley it was? A famous preacher, right? Famous preacher. And he's, and he's still famous to this day, long after he died, right? And he's not famous because he had millions and millions of dollars. He was just a preacher. His brother is Charles Wesley, who wrote over 11,000 hymns, including Heart the Herald, Angels Sing, he wrote over 11,000 hymns. This is an actual excerpt from John Wesley's diary. Sunday morning, May 5th, in the late 1700s. Sunday morning, May 5th, priest at St. Anne's was asked not to come back anymore. Sunday morning, PM, May 5th, priest at St. John's, deacon said, get out and stay out. Sunday AM, May 12th, priest at St. Jude's, can't go back there either. <laughs> Sunday PM, May 12th, okay, same day, priest at St. George's, kicked out again. Sunday AM, May 19th, priest at St. Somebody Else's, Boy, I, we need to call our church that. <laughs> Priest said, say somebody else's. Deacons called special meeting and said I couldn't return. Always be careful when the deacons call a special meeting. <laughs> Sunday p.m., May 19th, the same day. Priest on the street, kicked off the street. Sunday a.m., May 26th, priest in meadow, chased out of meadow as bull was turned loose during the service. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday a.m. June 2nd priest out at the edge of town kicked off the highway this is an actual excerpt from his diary is this mind-blowing now listen to this Sunday p.m. June 2nd afternoon service priest in a pasture 10,000 people came to hear me 10,000 people came to hear me John had his sights on heaven he wasn't preaching so that people will praise him he had nothing but discouragement and God kept him to keep telling him keep going keep preaching keep preaching God used him that we are still being blessed by his sermons to this day you can go on YouTube and you can hear John Wesley's sermons we're still being blessed by the movement that he's that God used him I, there will be no movement without humility. And God forced him to be humble, didn't he? Forced him to be humble. Is God forcing you to be humble? Are you seeing what God's up to in your life? Are you seeing that these difficulties and things that are, that are hurting you and keeping you down are actually blessings? They're actually amazing things. That God has a plan for you. And it's a plan beyond what you're seeing in this world. It has nothing to do with retirement and RSPs. And I mean, I'm not against those. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that shouldn't be your focus. Ask my sister. She's 58. She was all about, you know, preparing for the future, you know. Prepare for this future. Prepare for heaven. You have less than 3,000 days if you make 89 of actual living. Don't waste your time worrying about those 3,000 days. Worry about His will. Worry about, keep going. No matter what's happening to you, God's in charge. He knows what He's doing. He's got a reason for you. Is John Wesley any more important than you? No. Is Paul any more important than you? No. Is Moses any more important than you? No, he's not. The only difference between all these men and us is they're focused on heaven. All in. They are not focused. Moses was not focused with getting, you know, five bathrooms and a swimming pool. He's wandering around in the desert, 120 years old. We need to focus on the realities of heaven instead of the fantasy of earth. Lord Jesus.
I pray that you would reveal to us more and more the realities of heaven, the realities of you sitting at the right hand of God, the realities of you preparing a place for us, the realities of eternity with you, billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of years of life. And meanwhile, we are storing up treasures in bank accounts and, and feedlots and, 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 and granaries and car lots and Lord, forgive us. We shouldn't own anything that isn't there to glorify you. We shouldn't spend our time anywhere with anything other than what your will is for us. Teach us, God. Give us the knowledge of your will. We're trusted in you. And I ask that you would bless each and every person here today and hug them and let them know that you love them so much and that you have a plan for them. And your plan is, is for good, not bad. Your plan is for righteousness, not evil. Your plan is for life, not death. Your plan is for joy, not depression. And God, I just ask that you would free us from all the demons, from all the distractions, from all the addictions, from all the hidden lies and deceptions. And God, that we would live in the light for your glory because of you and only because of you, because you are life and there is nothing else but you. And Lord Jesus, we praise your holy name and we ask that you would revive us and revive our town. I'm not sure how you want that done, Lord, but I know you can do it. And I thank you for what you're doing around the world and I ask that you would just not stop and we come against the powers of Satan. We come against the powers of pride of people that want to hone in on it for their own good. Oh God, block them and block Satan in your name, Lord Jesus, by your power. And let your Holy Spirit move around this cursed world for the sake of lost, blind, depressed, dead people. <clears throat> Give them life, Lord, like you gave us life. And teach us more and more what it actually means to be your child. In your name, Lord Jesus, amen.